Okay. And Do you hear all the construction noise in the background? In whose background? Yours? Mine. No. Okay, some heavy equipment operating right behind my office and banging around a little bit, so I didn't want it to be distracting. Not at all. Okay. I'm so excited about uh, Wellness Wednesday and our opportunities here uh, to coach. But you know we're ministering. Is that, has that occurred to you in the sense that I know we're coaching in somewhat of a consultant's role, but where the opportunities are is that people are being ministered to as well. And I, I'm just really excited about that. You know, what do, what do you think about these Wellness Wednesday opportunities? What are you guys feeling? Well, and we are live. Definitely an opportunity to to be a conduit of his grace, definitely an uh, opportunity to allow the wisdom that comes from above um, wow. to flow through us, you know? And, you know, my prayer always is that uh, the anointing rest uh, so that it breaks the yokes that may be upon the people who are, are listening and break Break the yokes that are that are on me as as, as well. That uh, wow. I, you know, I am so grateful for that opportunity. Wow, that's awesome! And I just want to say, uh, on behalf of Georgia Christian Business Network and our vision to put God back in business, that you two are amazing, and we are appreciate the opportunity to get on this platform to welcome you each Wednesday uh, to our Wellness Wednesday segment. And this month, we're, we're talking about conflict. And some of you may be aware that we had an opportunity last week. Uh, Pamela was out due, due to illness, and we welcome her back today. But Rich and I were here, and we experienced conflict with the internet system. And so even being here at our co-working space at Cornerstone Co-working in Lawrenceville, which is an awesome facility, everybody's internet was working properly, except for we had challenges with transferring over to Facebook. And it was no fault of Novo. They're 100% perfect. It was the enemy, we believe, when we finally realized that this was a spiritual matter, that we had opportunity to say, okay, we're not gonna operate and look to the natural fixes. We're gonna look to the spiritual fixes. And throughout that uh, segment, Rich and I just went on Zoom and we're trying still to share that particular tape uh, video on Facebook and we'll get it there, trust us. But what I wanted to say, and then I'm gonna just switch over to you guys, is that there were opportunities there where we were able to re reference our situation throughout for meaningful uh, benefit to those that were partaking of that uh, last week's segment. Mm -hmm. So here we are today, uh, looking forward to hearing the topic on conflict and we did examining last week, right? Examining? Yes. Can okay, we combine the first two weeks last week since we missed the first Wednesday completely due to technical difficulties. Yes, yes, yes. So you guys tell us where we are today and where you're going. And I'm looking forward to just chiming in here and there. All right. Well, last week we had some opportunity to kind of lay out what conflict is, the four types that uh, to consider, as well as how to look at the whole package of conflict. It's not just, uh, interpersonal it's not just between us and one other person or a group there are other aspects to it as well and if we don't understand a lot of what's going on in the conflict it becomes very difficult to resolve it or address it because we may be focusing only on one area and that's not going to com allow complete resolution of the conflict we have to also make sure we're looking at all the areas and have an effective kind of plan to address the conflict. So this week we're going to look a little bit more at what are some of the, the ways to address the conflict when we're talking about interpersonal, intrapersonal, spiritual, 
uh, environmental. So there's a there's a lot to handle now after we've looked at how to examine it. It's the next step of what are some tools we can use. Wow. One of the things I want to point out is to keep in mind that intra or that inner conflict manifests itself as anxiety. And so um, being aware of your environment uh, will help you to be able to manage or resolve that inner conflict because typically it's something in the environment that triggers that anxiety. Would you break that down just a little more, please, Pamela, when you're talking about the environment uh, and what kind of setting are we referring, referencing? Well, uh, typical example, you're sitting in traffic and horns are honking. You get anxious. Uh, it may come out as aggression you know, road rage, but the very first thing that is, is uh, anxiety. Uh -huh. You are uh, sitting um, in the doctor's office and it's uh -huh. five minutes past your time to go in to see the doctor. So that okay. environment of uh, uh, not things not being timely, can produce anxiety. So especially if you're one of those people who has to have things done a specific way. And if it's not done that way, it creates that inner, inner conflict. And then, you know, as Rich said earlier about, you have to examine all, all the types of anxiety because what then happens is if you don't, resolve that inner conflict, then you project. And in that projection, you then draw someone else into to your, your conflict. Wow. You make your conflict wow. gotcha. theirs. And then you generate more conflict because you have your inner conflict, the conflict with other people. Uh, yeah, to resolve it, you actually make more instead of fixing it. Wow. Wow, this is this is great. So, I would say if we took that to the office, to the marketplace, and if I come in with, and I'm gonna just put it in layman's term, okay, with some baggage, some excess baggage, um, yet the atmosphere is uh, really pleasant, but I've got this baggage, so I'm gonna see through my colors, my lens are colored, so to speak. So I'm going to start to perceive things away from what they're actually being presented because it's coming out of what's within me. Is that correct? Right. Okay. Right. Uh, okay. Perception is, is everything. Uh, how okay. we perceive things uh, dictate or determine how we respond to them. Oh, yeah. And, you know, yeah. often uh, our perception is, a, is can be a misperception because uh -huh. we have not considered all of the elements of what's going on. We've not considered other people's inputs um, or, or any, any of those things. And so, uh, uh -huh. yeah, you walk in, you're bringing in your own your own perception. And again, we go back to that, that projection. Right, uh, right. Or there's another, uh, another term, which you're familiar with from cognitive therapy, uh, talking about mind reading, right? So you go in and you assume, you know, I, I'm on my, I'm on my keyboard and I look up at you. I don't say anything. And you assume that my looking up and not saying anything means that I somehow have something against you. But actually, I may not have even seen you because I was actually thinking about what it was I wanted to type. But now you create in your mind this conflict between the two of us because you have done this mind reading. Mm 
-hmm. she's saying or she's believing this about me. Mm -hmm. You know, that is so good. Um, Angela's with us on Facebook Live. Thank you for joining us. And she has commented in our news feed, we tend uh, to be de on the defense. My, my technology is challenged. Okay, we tend to be on a defense when we are carrying baggage. It places us on the defense. And, you know, I thought this week someone phoned me um, and they made an assumption about me and my intents and my motives. But honestly, I proceed through prayer. They're carrying baggage. And they were on the defense and someone overheard my daughter in love. I had the call on speaker overheard. And she said, she was totally on the defense. She started the conversation on the defense. Then the kicker, and push back on me if you'd like, the kicker to this, and that I'm disappointed with Beth Copeland about, is I allowed her to pull me into her foolishness. And I'm like, that wasn't anything I was feeling, or I didn't even want to, her tone was just so off with me. And I was like, hey, hold up. And, you know, and you're correct. You know, the scripture tells us that a soft answer turns away wrath. Yes. So when we uh, experience others as being defensive like that, as being um, inappropriately uh, uh, aggressive, not being assertive, but inappropriately aggressive, then it's important for us to confront it without being confrontational. Exactly. Confronted by that soft answer, turning away the wrath, giving it back to that calm moment so that, and communication, I think when we finish this conversation, we're going to realize that to manage any kind of conflict, effective communication is the key. And one of the things about communication got to clarify, clarify, clarify. Yeah. And so yeah. speaking softly so you can get back to that point where yes. you can get the other person to uh, a place of clarity. Yeah, because that, that is so key because in the end, I, I, in the end, I had an opportunity for a win is because I agreed with her. I said, honestly, this is totally off basis, but I'm gonna agree with you for the sake of peace. And I, I don't know if I should have told her that, but I did. But it had a common effect, you know, because the scripture says agree with your adversary quickly. And I didn't do it so quickly because I was like, you coming for me? No, I wasn't. But I was and, like- And when we hey, talk about off. communication, <laughs> When we talk about communication, Beth, what you did is what we call validation. So validate the other person. Validation doesn't mean you agree in terms of you think that what yeah. they're saying is correct, but you validate uh -huh. that you feel that way. So, okay. So, so okay. what you did was validation. And part of, again, effective communication is clarify to validate. Jennifer on Facebook is saying, this is good. So we're on to something here. And I want to thank Marge for joining us on a Zoom call today. Please chat if you have any questions, if you have any comments, we want to hear to, from you uh, because we want this to be productive for your life in dealing with conflict. What's on your mind, Rich? Where are we headed? Oh. Well, uh, Pamela has brought some some definitely good points as far as uh, how do you look at these things and how perception is incredibly important. And Beth, you hinted at um, how we may respond based on our lens as well. So the, Bam, Pamela's example of looking up and misinterpreting or misperceiving that uh, is definitely part of how to resolve the conflict because it's even if I come to Pamela and talk about it initially and if I'm trying to figure out even if there is conflict I need to do what she was saying too is analyze it clarify validate 
right? so we can look to some resolution and in the, in the validating, I may resolve it. You say, oh, Pamela, I felt offensive. I stood at your door and, or, and you looked up, but you didn't recognize me. So you can go, oh, really? Wow. I'm, well, I didn't mean to communicate that. I was just looking up and thinking, and I actually didn't even see you. I, I tend to do that at times, and I'm not even focusing on what I'm, where I'm looking. I, my brain is working. It's, it's one of those common ways of thought is we look up and to the right, and they go, really? Serious? Oh, I, I didn't realize that. Oh, so you don't have a problem with me? No, no, I'm glad you stopped by. Sorry, I missed you. I didn't realize it. I, you walked away and I didn't even know you were there. Like, wow. Oh, really? But, oh, okay. But having, oh, that, awesome. having that conversation is so important rather than, and that's the other thing, immediately address it immediately. So, so you're going to clarify, you're going to validate. Uh, but prior to that, you're going to address it immediately you're not going to let it do because now you have not just the issue that caused the initial conflict but the individuals have had an opportunity to to misperceive to uh, uh, catastrophize whatever is going on uh, and so it's important to catch it before it gets blown up into something that it definitely isn't. And it's also important to address it rather than sweep it under the rug because then you're just stumbling over the same thing over and over mm. again. Absolutely. So immediately yeah. addressing uh, the conflict is, is important. And the other thing, and I typically say this to, and Rich, you probably do too, to, um, married couples is you never, ever, ever, ever take an old conflict into a new conflict. Wow. Wow. What you talking about? Oh, God. You got to resolve, resolve, yeah. resolve the conflict at hand. And when you, two months from now, there's a new, new conflict and you don't go. And I remember when. Yeah. 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 Right. Resolve but, the conflict, let it go. And then you come to another conflict, resolve that conflict. So address it immediately, yeah. resolve it, and move on. Mm -hmm. Wow, this is very, very good. I agree with Jennifer. <laughs> you have some comments out there from Facebook. Uh, most of, and, and then first of all, let me say to Marge, this is wonderful comment. And this really has been on my heart for Marge with us on Zoom is saying, this is helping me with response on political issues. And this is so good to know because honestly, that's one of the objectives for me. I don't think when we started this and you guys came up couple of months ago with this month's topic that uh, that may have been at the forefront of our minds, but it is so appropriate and relevant right now. So Marge, we're hoping that not only you, but for so many others that are challenged during this time with conflict related to and revolving around the political issue and what we're facing right now in our nation. Um, so the other thing um, she says she also is she's trying to be better at resolving her conflict. We all need to purpose to be better. Beth Copeland's raised hand first uh, at doing so. From Facebook, just throw this out uh, prior to your next point, uh, Pamela Rich says most of the time it is not our words. It is our tone and our body language. We should agree to disagree. And that's exactly where I had to come through it to in that call. Because at the end of the day, although I said that because I discerned, she don't care about what I said. All she cares about what she's thinking. And until she gets to a point but you take the pen, I'd say, and you stick it in the balloon and you let the air out, okay? When you become at that peace level that uh, Pamela was speaking to earlier, you know? You don't have any other, I'm saying, okay, you, you go for it, you're right. Okay, what are you coming for me next? Because I'm gonna say the same thing to you, okay? Because then 
until you get to a place to come to yourself, so to speak. Yeah, what she just mentioned goes back to what I said. It's about, uh, I call it clean communication. Uh, so when you are in conversation with someone, it's tone, mm -hmm. volume, cadence. Tone, always respectful. Volume, I say use your inside voice. Because mm -hmm. if you speak too loudly, even if you're not angry, it feels angry to the other person. So using uh, your, your volume should always be uh, an inside volume. And then your cadence should be a moderate cadence, not you shouldn't speak too fast nor too slowly. When you speak too slowly, people think you think they're stupid. <laughs> when you speak too quickly, they can't understand you. So your cadence should be moderate. So tone respectful, volume, your inside voice, and your cadence moderate. Part of good communication. And then as she mentioned about body language, keeping your body uh, open and receptive. Okay, keeping your body open. And receptive. Okay, excellent. That includes like the expression on your face so that it, you know, you look as though you're interested in right, Rich, right, right. <laughs> you coming for me? You're, you're wasting my me. time. Come on, I'm not that stupid. You are. <laughs> but but, but Thank that's so good because- sure, no Thank you for the example, Rich. <laughs> but what, you, know, you think that was terrible? Is that what you're telling me? Okay, <laughs> but because honestly in coaching, I would always uh, coach my clients to not respond to nonverbals because nonverbals can take you off guard. They can put you off center, and you're 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 all caught up by then. And you're right. because the option is if I deal with a nonverbal, the other person is you misinterpreted. I no, I wasn't even you know like this here. You know, my grandbaby and my husband have this thing right here. That they have in there, they walk around, <laughs> and 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 it's just there, and it's like they're studying you, you know, or trying to figure you out, or something like that. But the opportunity is not to figure it out, you know. Well, of course, my eight month baby, but you you can ask someone, you know, uh, a question, or you can choose help me now with this one and push back to ignore the nonverbal, you know. You can. There's lots of different things going on in this. And Pamela is definitely right on with healthy communication and what we're aiming to do to resolve the conflict. And a fair number of the people I work with, whether it's as an individual and addressing the issues they have with other people or couples coming in and trying to resolve the issues between them, uh -huh. there's the accumulated uh, conflict that's there which definitely all conflicts but it's 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 totally coloring what they're doing now so we have to kind of do both in resolving the present but right resolving the present we definitely have to look at all the past that was there that's unresolved as well that is totally tainting it so it becomes with couples in history and that sort of thing a, a fairly laborious sort of process at times and, and you're also in the ideal circumstance like Pamela was describing, which is kind of what we're aiming for. Good cadence, good uh -huh. tone, good facial expression, open posture, right? And really just seeking to understand. Some people get sabotaged before that because they're coming in with sort of a really skewed perception of stuff. So they are triggered they are defensive, they are attacking right away. So, and I find sometimes that really limits the people from even being able to apply these techniques and, and goals that Pamela has definitely laid out very well. So I know I've been there at times too. I'm like, great, I'm supposed to do that. But I go into times where I had, I performed poorly 
in addressing that conflict. Uh -huh. And I left going, boy, how, how did I even, I did this thing and I don't realize until I'm completely done exactly what I did. And now I just generated more conflict with it. So uh -huh. that's where kind of therapy and coaching and getting wise counsel right. from the outside really comes in. And yes, ideally you dress it right away. You, you thank you, Rich, for that free and statement that you just made, because okay. some people don't think and don't understand that you, even as a counselor, a licensed counselor, this communication thing is serious. And it takes practice. practice. Excuse me? It takes practice. It takes practice. It's massive. And so because you listened, uh, tone receptive, cadence moderate, body open. Because if you come at me like I was a Tone respectful. 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 Okay, I said re receptive. I'll fix that. But respectful. If you're yelling at me, that's not very respectful. Or let's say you consider yourself because your tone is has gone up and increased that it's not yelling, whatever. <laughs> but let's say that your volume is higher. And so then what it is in a normal setting, that is not, res that's not respectful for me. You know, uh, that's not something I want to engage in, you know, because it's an immediate turnoff, what you say. So it's not welcoming. And I said receptive, but you said uh, yeah, respectful. Yeah. But uh, so either of those, I think, would you be okay with? Yeah. Because if you're trying to have a call or a conversation with me, I want to know that, you know, I want to be receptive to that. I want to engage in that. But if your tone is not appropriate uh, and I feel disrespect, then the opportunity for me is going to be immediate defensiveness. Or defensiveness. Shut down. Defensiveness. Yeah, right. Definitely right, can sure. be. And one thing we're, we're talking about, what I would say is both sides of this conflict. We have the one who's maybe misinterpreted, like I would come at Pamela and do, oh, you disrespected me. You looked at him, recognize I came in. And, and, I might be attempting to resolve the conflict, but it's I'm not identifying what it really is and I'm generating more. But then there's Pamela's side too of how does she handle this attacking person that's coming at her, right? Because uh -huh. ideally we're secure enough that even if people come attack us, mm -hmm. we're not really affected negatively. We don't even have to go on a defensive. I point out, like I say it this way, Jesus had nothing to prove, so he had nothing to prove. You think about all the conflict, all the arguments he got into, he was just like, okay, well, what do you mean? Or, well, that's real interesting you're saying that. Isn't that sort of contradictory? It, it, it yeah. was yeah. never defensive. He was so secure in who he was, he had nothing to prove. And that's kind of what wow. we're, we're aiming for on our own stuff. Like, if, if Pamela was so secure, I'm coming in, she's just like, Rich, it sounds like, you know, there's, there's some mis communication going on here what exactly did you hear me saying with that or how did you see that or it sounds like you took my gaze as i was ignoring you. ignoring you right wow right. like i could understand that, so that you're sense. coming back to the clarification rich I'm and then the validation where i go hey okay that makes sense i was looking up towards your direction and you there definitely could body language suggest i was looking at you and Maybe uh -huh. I made eye contact, maybe I didn't completely, or I did, but I, you know, sometimes we make eye contact, but we're really not there. We've had mm -hmm. those certain persons looking at you and you, you <laughs> earth to whoever, you're not there. And it, that's, you can misperceive it as you're not really paying attention to me or ignoring me. I mean, so well, both well, there's another piece. Oh, okay. You just that, have to comment. Well, there's okay. another piece of comfort. Okay, go ahead, go ahead. Go ahead. Well, it was just a comment. Uh, just another it. piece about conflict resolution Resolution I wanted to put out there. Okay. Uh, when, when you get together and you are trying to clarify what's going on, you're finally having that conversation. If you don't come to a point of agreement within about 15 to 20 minutes, someone needs to call a timeout and say, hey, let's come back to this. 
when you go away, rather than thinking about and planning what you're going to point out that the other person was wrong about when you go back, think about, okay, how can I look at this differently? Did I miss something? So when you, when you step away from the conflict, do introspection rather than a judgment of the other person. Mm -hmm. So that when you go back, you can finally resolve the conflict because you have a place where you can come to, uh, you can validate, you know, you, I absolutely, you were right on this point. I want to concede that. And, you know, and rather than, again, being judgmental of the other person. And, and that is so good. And Rich, let me just jump in here because Angela has a comment. Lack of communication is also considered disrespectful. And I wanted to time it, uh, right after Rich had commented because the other option that is often exercised uh, and is non-productive is to shut down. Uh, so so long. You, know, you said 15 or 20 minutes. I'm not going that long. That's not my makeup. I'm, I can't do that. <laughs> I got well, about, that's why I definitely, about definitely not in. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. I'm, that's yeah. what I'm saying. You definitely don't want to go yeah, but see what what I believe if I can uh, elaborate on what I believe because I can identify with Angela, if I'm trying to have a conversation with you, and you're not communicating I'm not getting any eye contact. You know, some of the things that you talked about that you alluded to uh, are either if I'm saying something and you don't respond. Uh, and then I repeat myself again. Oh, yeah. You know, that is totally disrespectful and is not conducive for a, a healthy relationship or healthy communication first and next healthy relationship. If we can understand the value of uh, dealing with that conflict, and I've got something to throw out to you guys to think about, communication might be a topic that we want to address on this platform at some point because communication is critical to healthy conflict, from my opinion. Healthy you know. conflict resolution, yeah. Yeah, and you bring up a good yeah. point, Beth, too, that, that sometimes resolution is prohibited by one person, right? It takes both to be able to resolve it. And if I'm stonewalling you, if I'm disconnecting, there's nothing you can do to have the relationship go to healthier. Right. It's you get to figure out, well, do I want to play this game the same way and try to make it work, which you can't, or say, well, I have to adjust how I'm interacting with you because you apparently only want to go so far. Right. And so the value back. comes up. I'm sorry, Beth, what did you say? The question, the question of value. Value. Do you value, uh, what kind of value do you put on uh, our ability to communicate our relationship, whether it's in the workplace, I think we have to look at it. And uh, there's opportunity if I depend on you for providing me something essential in order to make me productive in my job and how what I produce. Um, and then on the other side, if, if it's a relationship or marriage you mentioned, or even just girlfriend, girlfriend, boyfriend, or whatever relationship, there is an opportunity there as well, saying if you're not willing, if you know everything and you know the answer, but you can't even hear me, because I was telling someone recently, people just want to be heard sometimes. All the time. People just really want to be heard. Right. You know, and 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 not hurry up, say what you got to say, because I already know what you, that's not a good uh, uh, resolution to dealing with conflict. Don't hurry me up when I'm trying to communicate to you how I feel, because you've already decided the outcome. Do, do you understand what I'm saying there? Absolutely. That is critical, and that's where I, I 
reference, I don't know if I said it last week, but the idea of seek first to understand before you're understood. You sure did. Okay, that, that's kind of a principle I come back to with whoever I'm discussing something with or counseling with mm -hmm. is if you don't, everybody wants to be heard, right? And that, But if we're all coming in trying to be heard, which means we're talking, nobody's listening, so we're going nowhere. So any party, ideally both, but anyone can stop talking and start listening and start understanding. And once you communicate that, you start communicating value and you start communicating the desire to at least understand the person. Now we talk about resolving conflict, right? Listening is essential beginning of it. Wow. Right. Because sometimes wow. like they'll misperceiving all that stuff. If I don't really listen and understand what you're how you're seeing it, where you're coming from, then we're going to be I'm going to be shooting to resolve a conflict that I don't even completely. Wow. Grasp. Wow. I'm wasting my energy and wow. time and frustrating the other person. Powerful. So it's not just listening. It's hearing. Hearing involves actually understanding. Mm -hmm. what it is that you have said to me. Right. Actually uh, comprehending what it is that you would like for me to do differently. Correct. And I, I, I you listening to describe that, but you're exactly right to make emphasizing that it is a really seeking to grasp what they're saying and make it that you're comprehending it. That is the objective. Not just in one ear out the other. Oh, I'm listening yeah. to you. Yeah, well, you're not hearing me. I hear that as an often heard response, right? Well, I'm listening. Well, you're not hearing me though. <laughs> and if you're playing with your phone and you're uh, watching television or, or listening to music, I don't know that you heard me. Let me give you some feedback from Facebook. Um, got a couple of comments here. Angela again says, I tend to isolate myself from conversations. Um, hold on. I tend to isolate myself from conversations, but I am judged but I am judged for not joining in. Body language speaks volumes. If you are gossiping, I'm walking away. Let me go ahead and put another one out there for you from Jennifer. She's saying, uh, uh, most of the time we listen to respond as, op to uh, as an option to really listen in. And then Angela comes back and says, yes, comprehension is big, but does, that does not come immediately all the time. Yeah, for sure. All right, which is why, again, clarify, 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 mm -hmm. clarify. Right. Yeah. right. Now, one thing that I want you to address here is uh, it's hard to get, uh, most of the time when we listen to respond, we're, are we really listening? Because am I in, have I owned the opportunity to reach a resolution in the conflict if I'm listening and I'm, I, I've already decided that I'm totally right in this regard. And mm -hmm. so nothing you say is gonna take me off of where I am. Well, you're not even listening and understanding the person. You're already assuming what they're trying to communicate and have a response to it already. So no amount of words they use is going to be taken in to allow an uh -huh. opportunity to understand right it's i'm just sitting there waiting for you to stop talking so i can make my point again right if i don't interrupt you so how do you deal with that tell me how to to give us some how to uh approach someone that's coming from that angle well, there's only a certain things you can do right it goes back to some of what i said a little earlier that Conflict requires the cooperation of both people in order to resolve it. And this kind of goes a bit to what I've kind of described as boundaries. And I think the law of relationship is how a term I use. You can't control what anybody else thinks, feels, or does. No, so no, not at all. We're limited to whatever we can do based on the level of engagement of the other person. Wonderful. So if you have like couples, it's seen a lot where you know, typically the guy's watching television or playing on his phone and the wife's coming to talk to him. He's like, uh-huh, uh-huh, uh-huh. 
if he even responds at all. And I have to address, well, you know, the wife, we can't make him engage. Right? Uh -huh. The conflict in your relationship, right? So now what do you do? Because the relationship is now limited in communication and engagement based on how your partner is not responding. Uh -huh. Even on the, on the job, I can remember being really, really frustrated to the point of anger. I had a clinical director who would do supervision, uh, but she'd be on her phone texting. And I'm thinking, you're not, you know, you're not hearing me. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so uh, yep. it happens, it happens in the yep. workplace uh, as well. And in yep. the workplace, sometimes uh, conflict comes up between uh, employees and one of the ways that management can kind of mediate that is to make sure that they are not treating one employee uh, as though he or she is more important than the other uh, because that can feed into uh, we talked uh, the first week we talked about conflict, we talked about competition being something that can generate conflict. And so in order to eliminate or in order to lessen conflict between employees, then management uh, needs to validate each employee uh, and find each employee's strength. Yeah, now you're introducing uh, yeah. another another dynamic, right? Pamela, initially we're kind of talking about two people trying to resolve that. Now you mm -hmm. have management coming in to try to be the resolution or right to figure out how the employees are keep things stable. Well, and it's ultimately resolved, because I'm coming in, my employees are having a battle with each other that is reducing their productivity and probably influencing the morale of everybody else. So now my business or my department's performance is going to erode. Right. So I have to step in and do some resolution. And you know, ideally they're gonna, I'm gonna understand you know, one person, I'm gonna understand the other person, I'm gonna help them understand each other and come to some agreement. But that's not always the case. Beth, so now, you're more of a, a coach in that area, mm -hmm. area than Rich and I are. What do you What do you say? Well, the thing that you you introduce third party as well, but I have a method that I helped uh, in coaching times. And you're dealing with this situation, and I it really is according to Matthew. You know, going to the person and the person alone, and saying, you know, you initiate, and this is what I believe: uh, husband and wife is it, the leader. You know, and let the strong bear the infirmities of the weak. Who came to the realization that there's an issue? Um, then you be the one to approach it. But you got to pray. And I know this is probably the unconventional way in the workplace. But you pray like, like uh, Daniel or ne Nehemiah. You don't have to go out and say, come pray with me. They may not even believe what you believe. The opportunity is you go pray, get your head straight, okay? And then you come with the intent to do a win-win, not to sell your point, but that you can come to a resolution that I hear what you're saying to me that troubles you. And then I'm in turn able to communicate to you what is on my heart. And, you know, honestly, a lot of times it is back to what Pamela and I started earlier with, with the perception, you know, uh, people, you look like someone, You're, you've lost it because you look like somebody that did something in your past, in their past, or you're on a mode uh, to grow in, in a direction they want to go and they haven't a, a, a been successful maybe as they perceive that you are as you struggle but then thrive <laughs> to strive to thrive but the thing that i want to say basically in a nutshell and bring in a couple of uh comments 
is when someone is approaching you uh, about an issue or the nonverbal or mistreating you and, and just giving you the silent treatment or just approaching you in an ineffective and I would say, and you guys can push back inappropriate way. It, it even, I deserve to be respected. And so I think your opportunity is if you initiate the conversation and those of us are Christians in love, we are ministry ministers of reconciliation. And so because of that, we have to own the opportunity to make it right. You can say, well, they're a Christian and they're a minister of, of reconciliation as well. Well, maybe they're not as mature in their walk as you are. And God is calling you in this opportunity to be the leader. And so what Jennifer said, how do you interrupt someone gracefully? And I love this laughter, laughing out loud at Angela, mute button, you know, <laughs> that's how you interrupt it. But really, all jokes aside, you have to come to what Pamela said and maybe you re, iterate that Pamela is that if this is going on for an extended period of time see I don't have that kind of time y'all get Pam saying tap time out because honestly my spirit years ago I've been I come for you come for me I'm come for you okay but I'm learning although I told you about what happened earlier this week got getting placed on the defense but I'm learning that, listen, somebody said if it's not going to matter in five years, I think it was Bishop Bronner, don't give it five minutes. And so that, that back and forth, I can't do. I have to go outside and go to God and say, okay, show me my approach. Show me what I did wrong. And then I come back in. They may or may not receive you. Just remember that they may or may not, but then you can carry your peace forward, you know? So where are we? <laughs> what about that mute button? Yeah, the mute, the mute. <laughs> that, that definitely can be challenging when you have a talker who is very persistent and kind of domineering in their communication style so it becomes a little more challenging for sure but it is the one is hey can we pick this up later or i'd love to hear more about this but I, let's set up a time to to go through this more because i value you and you have a lot you want to say love to do that right now i'm not going to be able to focus on you quite as much as i'd like to don't be as blunt as i've been in the past and say you know i'm really not listening to you <laughs> well, you know, that can actually work for the really kind of narcissistic person. <laughs> I, I'm not listening. I really don't care what you have to say right now. Yeah. <laughs> not making it all about you. <laughs> well, you know, listen, this is something that I might say even now, even considering this week, um, your approach is unwelcoming. As Pam said, uh, what was it? Recept I said receptive, respectful. Your approach is not respectful. And I think I said it in a nutshell, maybe didn't say it with the right, I had a little more energy than I needed to have with it. Watch your energy level. Because honestly, what will happen if you let people know that I would love to have a conversation with you. I would love to hear what you perceive that I've done. Um, don't tell me, I'm sure you know this and I'm sure you know that. I'm like, hold, hold up, how do you know? And so you and I both know on both counts, that's wrong. You, you told me twice what I'm sure of. The third time you told me what you know that I know. Um, the thing that you want to be careful of is to make sure that you're at peace with God and man. And that's not always the case if you're, it takes two to tangle, we say, but the scripture says, let not those that are leaders or teachers 
be quick to engage in a quarrel. Because at the end of the day, even if you're both Christians, somebody needs to come to realization. We both love Jesus and for his, for his reputation, I'm backing it up. Marge is gone now, but what we're dealing, what we're dealing with in this political issue is trying to take the side and determine who's right. What's right is Jesus. That's, that's the only thing that is on this earth that is right. Is, is, is God, it, his principles, the commandments, that's what's right. Aside from that, there's no right. There, there's no right. I don't care about the right party. I don't know going left. What I'm talking about is Jesus. And if you can find in the word that is applicable to the situation and stand on that word, that's how you're going to get go forward. Mm -hmm. Yeah, when you were talking about the person coming on the the offensive, right? They, you know, I'm sure you, and I'm sure you, and I'm sure you. And my my, I'd love to be in a place, and I'm not always great at it, but it's more of the the seeking to understand. There, oh wow, well, and if I was coming from that place, you must feel blah 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 blah, or man, I would take offense to it if you if I thought somebody was coming from that direction. Right. Now all of a sudden you're making it on, um, they have to explain themselves a little farther and further. It goes back to the validation. Exactly. Right. And that yeah. is a great path through it. Otherwise, you know, wait, wait, no, no, you're wrong. Well, now we just set up a argument that's sometimes seen in the political area where you're wrong. No, you're wrong. No, you're wrong. You're wrong. And really we're watching kindergartners determine who is, <laughs> whose toy it is. Right? It's wasting this is kind of silly rather than oh okay well that's an interesting point could you help me understand that more or how do you see that working here and there's follow-up questions and validating i don't have to agree i make sure people know that you're not agreeing you're just trying to understand where they're coming from first exactly exactly and you know i want and i know pamela has to go so that's fine this has been wonderful i wanted us to talk a little bit about humility because you it takes someone uh being in a place jesus humbled himself he who knew no sin he became sin for us that we might become the righteousness of god in christ when we get to the point, and Beth Copeland's hands are up, so I'm not saying I can't even check out from this week. I messed up. But what I'm telling you is more often than not, don't kick yourself if you mess up occasionally. But more often than not, if you're hitting a good track record on a bump comes, that just means God's trying to grow you to another level. Humble yourself, reposition, reset, and get it going back the right way. But he Humility is before honor. If you know you're blameless, your intents were good, your motives were good, you had great intentions, and somebody just mistook you, but look for the opportunity what Rich said, in, or maybe Pamela, I'm not sure, but we discussed it. Introspect. Was there an opportunity for me to have done something differently? And at that point, I have to raise both my hands because no one's perfect. No one, but we do grow and mature and we need to get better at this thing. Mm -hmm. It is possible to resolve conflict. I'll talk to you yeah. guys next week. All right, see you, Pamela. Okay, take, take, take care, Pamela. Yeah, Thank and, and Angela point. said, this is great. I am learning to humble myself with conversations. Uh, Jennifer said, Jesus is the answer. And um, so there was Angela, I guess, already having that, co that comment about humility out there because God placed that on my heart. I'm looking for someone that's willing to walk in humility and humility is before honor. On the platforms, uh, political platform, if we find someone, even if you know who you are, if you're certain that you're the right candidate and that you're going to win this race, you don't have to belittle someone else. It's what Rich said earlier, knowing who you are 
And if you're not a part of the problem, be a part of the resolution, you know? And I love it. My, my, my daughter in love Bianca's on the call, uh, Zoom with us. And she would, had a great opportunity. Romy was saying, her husband was saying one thing and I was saying another thing. And she got in the middle of it and she said, da, 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 da for you and da, 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 da for you. And I think it was Makuna Batata, no worries, you know? And it, it was like, we both just hushed. We just hushed because she took authority and she spoke true to what he was feeling and she spoke true to what I was feeling and she ended it and we ended up laughing. You know, it was all in fun, but, uh, but then I was serious about my point and I think he was his, but the thing about it is sometimes there's an opportunity to ask, I see this happening. How can I be a part of bringing resolution to it? You know, don't worry about, oh, I don't want to interfere. I don't want to do this. I don't want to say that. No, because you care. You are, you have to own that. Mm -hmm. There's definitely parts we can play to bring the message of Jesus and the resolution of conflict to re other relationships we're involved in. Definitely. Bianca stepping in there is definitely loving both you and Romy in it. Yeah. Wanting harmony between everybody. Right. Yes, yes, and and desiring that, and somebody somewhere has to get to that point where you desire harmony, even in the nation. We've got to desire that on a greater level that we don't pick up a side, so to speak, but that we pick up Jesus' role and what would Jesus do? Is what somebody uh, Angela said. Let go and let God. We do not serve a God of confusion. And if you're forced, don't allow someone to force you into putting a disclaimer on your newsfeed, on your business or whatever about who you stand for. You don't have to prove that to anyone. I, I, listen, if you need permission, you got it from me today. <laughs> you do not have to make a declaration. I love it. I do have a couple of things politically uh, driven, but they're of God that I'm I'm going to post from Tony Evans. I'm saving it to, to the next couple of days from Tony Evans family, the Evans family. I love it. And I think everybody should hear it. And so I'm going to post it on GCBN page and my personal page. It's so important that we get messages out of Jesus and that we stop trying to decide and say, if you vote this party, then you don't love uh, black people. Or if you vote this party, means you love only white people. No, God is the God of unity. Mm -hmm. And you've got to learn how to vote whatever party it is. And at the end of the day, know that you love all of God's children. Mm -hmm. So that's important right there. Absolutely. Definite. What are we talking about next week, Rich? We've got a little bit more details on, on what do we actually do in the process of resolving conflict. If we have agreed we want to resolve it, what, how do we go about it? There's both the short-term conflict that Pamela mentioned about needing to address it right now, but also uh -huh. the conflict that's been sitting there that's been stewing for a while what sort of things do we, what can we do there? What actually proactively, not just listening, but what are we seeking and what steps are practical there? Think, okay, we've agreed. Wow. I've understood what I've done wrong. And the other person has understood what they've done wrong. So now where do we go? We've, we felt validated. Then what? How do we move then forward what? and establish more trust, more, uh, confidence in the relationship, better patterns of communication. How does that happen? So. I want to talk too about the Hatfields and the McCoys too. How do you, <laughs> how do you do that? How do you get through these? Well, Especially well, in family, in family maybe. And you guys, anything you want to talk about? out next week. Thank you for, for great activity on Facebook Live and even on Zoom. We've got some participation today. Um, what I'd like to do is invite you to invite someone back to our Wellness Wednesday call next week. It's our last uh, opportunity for October 
and to deal with our topic of conflict. And you heard Rich about all the great things that he's already planned that he and Pamela will del dwell into. And so the opportunity uh, for you is to bring any additional uh, questions or comments that you like to make this the best experience for you and make it productive. Mm -hmm. Also at Georgia Christian Business Network, putting God back in business, our Tuesday Take Charge Tuesday platform, we're welcome, welcoming Pamela Booker. Have you ever figured out how to go from uh, the marketplace to entrepreneurship? Is it possible? What's life after marketplace? What does that look like? like uh, going to a business owner. Some of you are straddling the fence and that's fine. One foot in corporate, one foot in uh, entrepreneurship. Pamela's gonna help you with all of that. That's fine, you can continue to do that. But keep, how do you do it and continue to grow? And so in both arenas, and how do you just know when it's time to turn the switch off and God's saying, let that go because I wanna grow you here. And maybe you've made it to a level of BP as Pamela had, uh, but she left the marketplace. So she's got some great things to talk to us about next week as well. So thank you so much. I have two great events that are coming up, uh, time management with uh, Convergent Solutions. I'm gonna, we're really, really gonna start uh, posting those. That's a half day workshop that you really want to sign up with Rob Bingham and Brett Campbell. In addition to that, we have, all things are to, excuse me, nonprofit. Anything you need to know about hearing, reporting with uh, Henrietta Akalaxi and also Dr. Tanae Akalaxi, same name, last name, sister in laws, a powerful duo team that are going to be on the platform November 7th for a workshop. Of course, in all of these things, Georgia Christian Business Network members, you have an abbreviated cost that is considerably discounted. So if you're looking to join a great network that helps you grow spiritually and professionally, please look at our website, www.gcbnetwork.com. Join our network and tell others about it. Thank you for joining us. Any final words, Rich? Are we good? We're good. Awesome. Awesome. It's been great. Thanks for joining us, Bianca, and all of you awesome people, Angela, Jennifer, uh, on Facebook. We really appreciate your being here for the comments, and there were several others. Uh, please make yourself known going forward, because I can't see from here who you are, and we just want to acknowledge that you've been with us. Have a wonderful Wellness Wednesday. Take Bye. care. Thanks, Rich. Great job. Bye-bye now.